Hello, my name is Matt Max. Welcome back to Let's Build an 8-Bit Computer. I got a lot of requests to continue this series, and recently I thought, yeah, why not? Let's design the computer. I can design it electronically, and then I can still build it in reality. So what you see on your screen right now is a fully functional 1-bit ALU. The ALU is the part of the CPU that does all the arithmetic and logical operations. And now you're saying, wait a second, Matt Max, the last video you showed us was a 4-bit ALU. Why do you go back to a 1-bit ALU? Well, the 4-bit ALU could only add and subtract, whereas this can do way more than that. This has a lot of different functions and a lot more functions than just add and subtract. So this might look really complicated, but it's actually quite easy. And I'm going to explain every single part of it individually. There are four major parts to this machine. There is the decoder, which is this. Then there is the arithmetic unit and the logical unit. And this is an inverter. I will talk about this in a second. So let's begin with the decoder. What does the decoder actually do? Well, you somehow need to tell your LU what it is supposed to be doing. And you do this with so-called control bits. When you have an 8-bit computer, you have, wait, 8 bits, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Those are the 8 bits you can play with. But when you actually look into it, what you will find out is that the first four bits are the address. And the next four bits are the control. Basically, the last four bits of the, this 8-bit number right, tells the CPU what it's supposed to be doing, and the full four bits tell the CPU what it should be doing it with. Okay, this is a memory address, and this is what it's supposed to be doing. So if you want to build a computer, you actually have to define all the uh, controls, right? You have to say, okay, you know, if I have 0000, what does this mean? If I have 1010, what does this mean? And I just define for myself, everything beginning with a 1 is con concerning the ALU. So 1000 to 1111, those are all the ALU commands. Basically, as soon as I have a 1 over here, the ALU is on. If this is a 0, then the ALU will be off and it won't do anything. And then the next, uh, the next bits do the following. So the second bit, right, the second bit uh, is an inversion. So, everything that starts with 10xx is a normal command. Everything that starts with 11xx is inverted A. Okay? Inverted A. And that gives me way more different commands to play with, as you will shortly see. So, the last two bits actually tell the ALU what it's supposed to be doing. And because it's two bits, there are four different states this can be in. And what I defined is that 00, 0 is addition, 0, 01 is and, 10 is or, and 11 1 is not B, inverted B. Those are the four basic commands of the LU, but if you combine it with this right here, with inverted A, we get the following. 1, 0, 0, 0, okay, not inverted A, and zero, 00, so that's an addition. Then we have 1100. Zero, zero. Again, zero, 00 at the end. It means it is an addition, but with an inverted A, that means the addition becomes a subtraction. Because here we're doing A plus B, and here we are doing minus A plus B. And that is a subtraction. Then we have 1001, that is. A and B, and 1101, that is not A and B, okay? And as you can see, because I have this invert bit, those four functions suddenly become way more, right? The same is true with OR, 1010 is A or B, 1110 is not A or B, and finally, 11 in the end, it doesn't matter if it's 1111 or 1011, it's both not B. Okay, so in total, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different commands that my ALU can actually do, right? 
seven different things that my ALU can actually do just by implementing an addition and or a not B and an inversion. Just by doing this, I can suddenly do all of this stuff, which is really cool. But how do I actually tell the ALU, you, you should be adding, you should be subtracting, you should do and, and so on and so forth. You do this with control bits or with enabled bits. And the way this works is that down here, we have something called a decoder. This is what takes this input right here. So let's say uh, 101, right? And say CLU, you know, I want A and B, so logical operation A and B, I want you to do this. So how does this work? Those are the four control bits, those blue lines. Basically, this line is this first bit, and yes, I know that this is happening for whatever reason. So this right here is, uh, is this first bit, this blue line is the second bit, and then those two blue lines are the last two bits. Okay, let's hope that this goes again. It doesn't. Okay. So what do we have here? Let's ignore for a moment the first two bits and let's focus on the last two because the last two bits, that is what actually changes the function of the ALU, right? The first bit turns the ALU on and the second bit just inverts A. So the last two bits are, is the actual function of the ALU and that is what this does. So as you can see, it's and or not be an addition or subtraction. And it's really, really, really simple. It's really simple. So it's just four AND gates. And the first part is always connected to this bit, right? As you can see right here, if you follow the green line. Basically, uh, if two lines cross and there is not one of those dots, they don't touch, okay? And uh, the, second, uh, the second input is always connected to this bit right here, as you can see right here, right? And then we have a couple inverters sometimes, right? Not always, but sometimes. Why? Well, what I want happening is that if I tell my ALU to do an end operation, I want this to be true and everything else to be false. If I tell my ALU to do OR, I want this to be one and everything else to be false. And that's exactly what this does and it's really simple. So let's look at AND, okay? AND is O1, okay? So this should be true when this first bit is zero and the second bit is one. And as you can see here, it's an inverter. That means that if this is zero, this becomes one, so this input is one. And when this is one, well, this input is one, so it's one. Or is one zero. And as you can see uh, here, if I have one zero, this first bit is one, so this input is one, and the second bit is zero, so it goes through the inverter and it's also one, so this is one. That's how it works. It's really, really simple. And I just do this for all four of those functions that I've implemented. And that's all the decoder does, right? The decoder enables and disables or controls those enable bits right here. Okay? So that part is really simple, although it might look a little bit difficult at first. The next part is this right here. This basically takes the first two bits. This is A and this is B. This is our input, right? This is A, this is B, and those are our first two control bits. So A goes into one end gate and B goes into one end gate. And then you see that the second pin of both end gates is actually connected to the first bit. And this makes sense because the first bit is what turns the ALU on. So if this first bit is not set, then it just ends here. Everything out will be zero. It just cannot go further because the LU is not turned on and that means that all those end gates will always be false. So that's how this is done. Then the second bit, again, it's inversion, right? So what it does is that it connects through this end gate to this XOR gate. And basically, whenever this is set, this XOR gate will invert A. Why? Okay, let's say A is one, right? Let's just, let's just say all those end gates are always uh, are always true, right? So this first bit is always a set. Let's say A is 1, okay? So this is 1, and now we want to invert it. An XOR gate is only true when both inputs are different. So if this is 1, right, this is the basically the inversion bit, right? If this is 1 and I get 1, I'll put a 0. So yes, A is inverted. If A is 0 and this is 1, the output is 1. 
so A is inverted. If inversion is off, if A is 1, then this is 0, this is 1, I get a 1. If A is 0, then this is 0, this is 0, I get 0. So this actually inverts A. Again, pretty simple. And then, finally, I have my logical and arithmetic operations. So, what you see right here is an adder. And I will not really explain this because I already explained to you how an adder works, okay? Those are my both XOR gates, those are the both end gates. And that's basically it. The only different thing is that there is an end gate at the exit, and this end gate is connected. And actually, all of those four end gates, if you follow those green lines, they are connected to our enable bits down here. Right? All those end gates up there are connected through our enable bits. So the way the enable bits work is that every, every one of those things is done whenever the ALU is on, but only one of those results actually leaves the ALU. And the way it leaves the ALU is through here. Basically, this green line is the output of the ALU. And the enable bits only enable one of those four outputs. Right? So if I want addition, then this right here will be, this end gate right here will be true because this enable line is true, right? So this will be the output. If I enable and, then this will be the output. If I enable or, then this will be the output. If I enable not B, this will be the output. Okay, so this controls what is actually, what is actually done in the ALU. Finally, we have our logical unit which is really boring. Our logical unit consists of an AND, an OR, and a NOT. That's all. <laughs> That's really all. So we just connect B to NOT because it's not B. That's the operation, right? And apart from that, we connect both A and B to the AND and the OR. So the result will be A and B and A or B, right? Those are the re respective results that get out of here, come out of here. And again, it goes through those AND gates up here that are enabled with enable bits. And that's it. <laughs> that's all it takes to actually build an ALU. This ALU can do all of those things, right? Here. All of those seven functions. It can add two numbers. It can subtract two numbers. Sorry. It can do A and B. It can do not A and B. It can do A or B. It can do not A or B. And it can do not B. All of those things are possible with this really simple Really, really simple circuit. So let me actually show you the complete thing. So this right here is an 8-bit ALU. And as you see, it's exactly the same that you just saw. Just that, well, this thing right here is repeated eight times. And that's all there's to it, right? And you know, I have to say, I find this kind of sexy. It looks really good. It probably isn't probably recorded with XSplit, but I think this is kind of sexy. And so simple, which is really awesome. Anyway, my name is B Max. Thanks for watching this episode, and see you next time.